Hi, this is Dan here. I hope you're doing really well today. In this bass lesson, I'm going to show you how to make really cool music on the bass using chords chord progressions and a little bit of melody. There aren't that many songs that actually purely use chords on bass. Here's one I can think of actually. That's one, but other than that, you know, as you very much know, bass players usually just play root notes and chord turns and things like that. But you can get a looper pedal, you can play a chord progression and you can practice on top of that. You can compose, you can improvise, you can jam. You unlock the neck a little bit by playing chords all over it. You understand harmony. There's a ton of stuff that's useful and that's what we're going to do in this lesson. All the examples in this lesson are going to be in the key of G major. And we're going to start on the E string, playing the G major scale across and playing the chords from there. And I'm going to explain a few things as we go. First of all, what this is. This is a fretboard diagram and the orientation of your bass is, is like this. So the lines going down this way are your strings from left to right, E, A, D, G, and the horizontal lines are your frets. The blob is where you put your fingers and the number in it is the finger number to use. And then finally underneath you have the interval that it makes up, which is a good thing to know. So let me show you this. So this is the first one. We've got a G on the third fret. Uh, yeah, pay attention to where the fret numbers are as well. And those are the numbers on the left. We've got a G on the third fret of the E string. We've got a D on the fifth fret of the A string and it's saying fingers one, three and then finger two on the fourth fret, the B on the G string. Now straight up, you will notice that that's a bit taxing on the hand. So at any point, if you're practicing this, if you feel any strains, especially down the wrist here or in the joints here, it's a good thing to maybe stop for that day. If you've never played chords before on the bass, this kind of thing will be quite difficult, but just ease yourself into it, give yourself time to learn it, bit of a stretch. There's an interesting technique going on with the plucking hand as well. Let me show you, let's get a good angle on there. So I've got my G chord here, and it's got a root, a five, and a tenth. That's the third up the octave, quite a simple voicing. A voicing is what notes you put into a chord, more of that later. And I'm using my thumb for the E string, index for the A string, and middle for the G string, and you can create rhythms doing that. Let's just start simple. This is called a free stroke. A rest stroke is what you're used to when you play bass. You pluck and you come to rest on a string. That's called a rest stroke. This is from classical guitar, really. And a free stroke is just where you pluck, whether it's with the fleshy part of the thumb or the other fingers. And you just kind of come away from the bass. Not, you don't want a slap sound. Nice, gentle. So if you're going one, two, three, four, you can practice quarter notes eighths, and those are sixteenths. So that's a tiny bit about the technique and about the fretboard diagrams. Let's go through all the chords of G major. Every single shape in this lesson is available on a free PDF with no sign up or anything like that. Just follow the link below and you can get it. So we've got G, A minor, I'll just stop to explain this line. That's called a bar. Guitarists do this a lot. It's where you use one finger to play more than one note on the same fret. So the first fingertip is playing the A on the fifth fret of the E string, and I'm just backing that finger. So this part here where that crease is down here is pressing down on the C on the fifth fret of the G string. That's called a bar. And that way you can just use one finger to play notes like that. And then I've got that note there. So that's an A minor chord. B minor, same chord. One fret higher, C major. Exactly the same shape as this first one. As is the D, same shape. E minor, another E minor. So straight away, the one, the four and the five chords were major. The two, the three, and this six here are minor. We've only had two shapes so far. That's an odd one. That's a third shape. That's a diminished chord. The fifth here is flattened, and that's why you've got that. So you can use your second finger for that. And again, I'm barring here. If you find another way to do this that makes more sense to you, then do it. Let me 
we got the G again. Very simple voicings. The root, the five, and the third up the octave. So let's make a chord progression from that. So I'm gonna choose E minor, D to C. That's the speed I'm choosing. You can do anything you like. Da, 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 those are eighth notes. I'm going E minor, D, push to C, uh, D, C, like that. So I'm going. You can separate the notes out. I should have mentioned that. That's by going thumb, index, middle, index, like. Do that kind of thing. You can do two together. Or you can do all together. You can do anything here. Bit more rhythm. Now imagine getting a looping pedal. I don't have one set up unfortunately so I can't demonstrate it. But you would punch that in and then do a little solo over the top. That's a great thing to practice. We're in E minor or G major, so that's how that would work if you wanted to give that a go. Just a quick word, this is really good for composing, it's good for creativity, improvising, understanding harmony, but yes, we don't really play stuff like that in songs. But don't forget that if you play that, like a traditional bass player would, separate the notes out. It starts to sound a bit more like a bass line. So all th those notes are, are chord tones, are arpeggios, played together, that's what a chord is, okay? So just separate the notes in any of these shapes and you've got the components of a good bass line as well. Okay, I'm gonna do exactly the same thing now, except I'm gonna use a different voicing. Remember, voicing is the notes that you choose to place into the chord. So root five, 10, which was what we did previously. That's quite basic, I like that. It's good for pop, it's good for rock. Let's do a little bit more of a jazzy, bluesy feel perhaps, and that's just seventh chords. So here I'm doing a root, a seventh, and then that same tenth and I'll play them all the way through. Actually, that seventh one, I didn't put the fifth in. This would be it. What we notice here is that the one and the four are the same. I'm creating chord progressions right now, even by demonstrating this. The two, the three, and the six are all minor seventh. The five is the only one that's got this dominant seventh shape, which has a very strong pull. You may have heard of a two, five, one if you did that. It's a jazz chord progression, more of that later. And then there's this funny chord, the, the seven chord is that minus seven, flat five. It sounds a real mouthful, that's a minor seven flat five, but it does describe exactly what is in the chord. So you can make up chord progressions using that. In the intro I did. It's going between the five, that dominant seventh, D7, to the E minor seven. I've played that chord progression for years, I'm always drawn to that, I love the sound of it. introduce what I did there. You can add melody to the chords. It's something guitarists do a lot. Since we're in the key of G major, which has a relative minor of E minor, it doesn't matter how you think of it, E minor, G major, the same. All you need to do is know the notes and you can play them over it and they'll all sound good. Minor pentatonic as well sounds good, E minor pentatonic. See, you can start to hear the basis of songs that you can create and also songs that are out there. So this will help your ear with chord progressions too, as well as being fun to play. So far, we've had two sets of shapes on the E string. Now I'm gonna do the set of shapes rooted on the A string. So this time the voicing goes root, major third, and then the seventh. I'll play through them now. So 
Actually, I ran out of space a bit there, so that's seven chord we just played here. G major seven, that's what I did there. And now I can go to one of those chords that we just played on the E string. The four chord in G major, if you don't understand what I'm saying with two, five, one and all that, just learn a scale, G major scale, and number the notes one to eight. The eight is the octave. You just find four, it's C, and that's a major seventh chord. So that's what I did there. That was just a G major scale. I have to adapt the technique a little bit if I want to play in this style, using a bit more of the thumb perhaps. Hammer on there. So what you can start to do now is play chords that are on the A string and the E string. So I, let's make them another one. There's that five chord I liked before on the E string, the D7. Let's alter the rhythm a bit. To keep the notes separated there, I'm just lifting up. You can also get that bossa nova thing, a bit like the Mario Kart theme tune. That's on the A string, I'm just going G major 7, and you just go, that gets your 5. So that's just another fun thing you can do. But I just quickly want to talk about voicings. Let's go to that G major 7 that's rooted on the 10th fret of the A string. I've got a root, major 3rd, major 7th. Let's swap that major 3rd out for a 5th. Very subtle difference, but it is a bit different. There's a different voicing. Root, five, six. You can do a sus two chord by doing root, five, nine. That's just a G major seven. And because it's a major chord, major pentatonic works over that. Then I went to the C major 7, did the same thing. Minor with minor pentatonic, that's another cool thing you can do. If you want to know anything about the minor pentatonic, check this video out. So you can see how you can really go down the rabbit hole with this. There's so many things that you can do in terms of changing the style, changing the sound of your bass, altering the chord progressions. I want to just show you a couple of things to practice to finish this video. Number one is just to learn all the shapes in sequence, you know. And just understand that in a major key, you've got major, minor, minor, major, major, minor, that diminished one, and then you've got the major again. Learn them in sequence, whether you're on the E string, doing root five, ten, or doing the seventh chords on the E or the A string. Still the same here, look. Major, se major seven, two minor sevens, a major seven again, then it's five, so dominant seventh. Minor seven, I've got to come back here for that funny half diminished chord. Okay, you do learn these things just by drilling it in all the time and you just realize, okay, major, minor, minor, and you'll understand that the more you do it. That's the first thing. Second thing, make chord progressions up. Like that, I'm starting on E minor now. E minor, D, C. And just maybe get a looper pedal, record it, or just simply play it with a metronome or a drum loop. Let's listen to it with a drum loop. probably 
won't play that on a bass line, but you could write a song doing this. You could tell your guitarist, I want you to play a bit like this. I think it makes you a bit more skilled to be able to play these chords. Then finally, you can play a song that you know that uses chords. So if it's some sort of pop song, then you can just use the really simple chord shapes. But look, what's a tricky song? or tune, giant steps. Let's go through very quickly to finish this lesson. I'm gonna play slowly because it's 286 beats per minute normally. I'm gonna very slowly go through the chords of giant steps. I might adapt it a bit actually. I might, I might do half the speed, we'll see. Um, and I'm just gonna go through those chords, see what it sounds like. the length of the chords, make it your own and do something like this. is using the shapes that I've taught you and you just need to learn it well enough that you know the notes. I'm reading the chart here, just reading it off. And to do this, you need to know the shape and the note, the root note that you need on whatever string. So you need to know your notes. Okay, that's an excellent exercise for learning the notes on your fretboard in conjunction with these shapes. Don't forget, when you play them separated, you're playing what you would in a bass line. You know, you could very easily flesh out the third and the fifth in there as well to make this entire lesson like a bit more of a traditional bass line lesson. Anyway, that's enough for now, I think. If you like this lesson and you got a bit of time, perhaps watch this lesson on harmonizing a scale, which is a little bit more bass line focused rather than chord focused. If you have any questions at all, let me know. Otherwise, thanks very much for watching and I'll see you on the next video.